Hey guys, Retro Game Club here, just doing a quick little tutorial about overclocking. If you purchase a godly mode console from RetroGame.club, your system's already overclocked and you don't really have to worry about that. The reason why we only overclock consoles in the godly lineup is because all of those consoles come with fans and heat sinks, which is definitely recommended if you're going to be overclocking your Raspberry Pi hardware. You can get away with maybe just using heat sinks, but um, keep an eye on the upper right hand corner of the screen uh, because if a little um, heat thermostat indicator pops up, that means that you are, uh, your console is getting a little bit too hot. So definitely want to turn off your console if you ever see that symbol and consider getting a fan or some heat sinks. So anyway, uh, this tutorial is perfectly valid for people who are using either Retro Evolved software or Retro Pi. Basically all that's required is you have a Raspberry Pi hardware board and a micro SD card reader. Uh, or in this instance we're actually just going to use a keyboard plugged into your Raspberry Pi console. So first things first, plug in a keyboard to the USB port of your Raspberry Pi console. Uh, once you get into your main menu here, uh, what you can do to uh, access the micro SD card is you're going to need to exit emulation station by pressing the F4 button on your keyboard. After you press F4 you're going to see perhaps some text up here. Depends on how your system's configured. And basically this is where you're going to enter in some commands so that you can edit the configuration file necessary to overclock the console. You are going to type in cd space dot dot forward slash. That goes back a directory so we enter in the home directory and then we do cd dot dot slash again and now we're basically in the root of the SD card. So now you're going to type in cd boot and that puts us in the boot folder and that's where we have a configuration file that is going to allow us to overclock this console so now you type in sudo space nano space boot or i'm sorry config c o n f i g dot t x t and this is going to open up the config dot text file inside the boot uh, folder on your micro sd card and this is where you have the overclocking settings. So on all Retro Evolved software, we have already added the necessary lines down here that you would need to overclock a console. So right here where it says uncomment to unclock your console, it's really super easy to overclock a a retro evolved console because we've already supplied you with some basic overclocking um, instructions there so you can go a little bit more all out you can increase the frequency um, things like that but you do really want to be careful about editing this this is a basic overclock which is good for most Raspberry Pi hardware boards all hardware boards are created slightly differently, so this may not work on some Raspberry Pi consoles. You'll know if it starts to overheat, it'll give you an indicator. Uh, don't worry though, you're not going to void your warranty with this overclocking because it is a very basic one. So all you have to do if your console is not a godly mode console and you're using Retro Evolved is go down here to where it says uncomment and simply delete the hashtags <laughs> delete the pound sign from every single one of these lines and then after that uh, oh by the way if you're using RetroPie of course this is not supplied um, you have to add this in yourself so you can add in these lines here you can type them in manually so just pause your YouTube video and add those lines then it's as simple as holding down the control button and pressing X to exit. It's going to ask you if you want to save. So you're going to press the Y button to save it. And then it's going to ask you what you want to call the file you're saving. We want to call it the same thing, so you're just going to hit the enter button at this point. And boom, you're done. It's that easy. Um, like I said earlier, be careful about your temperature. Um, you definitely want to keep an eye out for that indicator. And you do need to 
uh, put those pound signs back in here if you have an issue with temperature or at least go out and buy uh, some heat sinks and a fan. Okay guys, so to exit this menu you can either shut down and restart your console by typing in reboot, or I'm sorry, sudo reboot, so sudo space reboot, and then after that your system is going to be overclocked. So what does this help with? Why would you even want to bother? If you're only playing games like Super Nintendo, um, NES, arcade games, you're probably not even going to need to do this, but uh, N64 in particular, Dreamcast, uh, PlayStation, PlayStation Portable, so those systems heavily benefit from having an overclocked console. Also, some of the menu options that we have on Retro Evolved software uh, with some of the more advanced themes like Space Oddity, which I'm showcasing here. Um, it, the, Space Oddity is a great example because this theme is really awesome, but it pushes the limits of the hardware when you're using uh, video previews. And the reason why is because the video previews on Space Oddity don't use OMX Player. So when you're in the settings here and you go to um, when you go to other settings and you go down to use OMX Player, that is what you want to use on practically every other theme when you have video previews because it doesn't use as much CPU, right? But if you were to enable that on Space Oddity, I'll show you real quick, and some other themes that do complex stuff, um, it, the video basically takes up the whole center of the screen and it doesn't really look very good, right? Now, of course, it runs a lot smoother. OMX Player is way smoother, and it doesn't use up as much CPU, so your console's not going to overheat. Um, but it doesn't really work out with some themes that move the videos around. So in this instance, we would disable it. And what that does is it enables VLC Player, which is a resizable player that can be moved around with themes. So the themes can say, hey, I want the video to play over in the corner instead. Um, also, I suggest keeping your VRAM limit at 80 megabytes. I've talked about this in other videos and keeping your power saver mode disabled. That's just a good rule of thumb to keep in mind uh, with an overclock console or not. So that should really help you guys play some Nintendo games. Let's go down just to do a little quick test here. Banjo-Kazooie is one of the ones that doesn't always uh, work so great when you don't have an overclocked console. So let's try to boot into the game real quick and see how that works after it's overclocked. So still not 100% perfect, but pretty smooth. Not bad. No stuttering. A little bit of jittering. It's hard to tell if it's just because that was from the original. <laughs> but there you have it, guys. That's how to overclock a Raspberry Pi Model 3B using Retro Evolved or Retro Pi.